Hello everyone. This is the continuation of last lecture Women and Vocational Education in Ancient and Medieval India, Unit 4, Semester 2. We were pending with methodology, teacher-pupil relationship and position of women in ancient India. Now let us take up the heading methodology the method of teaching was oral transmission recitation was an approved method of teaching the teacher had the moral obligation to hand down to the pupil the exact contents of the sacred books as he himself had perceived them The general method of teaching was rote. The connotation of the term rote was different in those days from the meaning which we think today. The students had to conserve and memorize the learning. He had to commit on his own initiative a whole textbook to memory. but there were question answer procedure to clarify the learning of students also to relieve monotony stories and fables were told to students the system of teaching was individual and each pupil was separately instructed by the teacher There were occasional debates and discussions which helped to clarify difficult thoughts and ideas. The students had to understand clearly and to memorize and even conserve. The methodology was divided into 3 phases. Number 1, Shravana that is hearing number 2 manana that is thinking and number 3 niddhi dhyana shana or revelation during this period the richer people also contributed and patronized education generously they helped the cause of education and sometimes they even funded free boarding and feeding for poor students that is a kind of scholarship in modern terms teacher pupil relationship the teacher was regarded as guru a friend a philosopher and a guide the teacher was the alma mater he himself was the institution a student had a social and spiritual relationship with his teacher it was devoid of materialistic connections but the pupil usually offered a gift to the teacher as guru dakshina to express his or her gratitude but the teacher had the liberty to refuse it according to upanishad there were four stages of life or ashramas namely brahmacharya studentship grihastha or householder vanapastha or forest hermit sanyasi or wandering ascetic students were free to approach the teacher even after the completion of his or her brahmacharya or a student life for advice the teacher was regarded as the spiritual father of the people position of women in ancient india 
the general position of women in ancient India was unique. They enjoyed high status and independence in the society. An unmarried young learned daughter ought to be married to a learned bridegroom. This clearly signifies that there was pride and prestige of knowledge and education. Early marriage was not in vogue in those days. The customs of infant marriage and enforced widowhood were not prevalent in Vedic India. Girls had free access to education. Some hymns of the Rig Veda were composed by poetess. We get reference of such learned ladies such as Lopamudra, Urvasi, etc. The ancient society was not conservative in terms of education. There was no parda system or even ladies could pursue the teaching profession. Panani and Chhatrashalas are boarding houses for women students and these boarding houses were supervised and looked after by lady teachers. Co-education during this period was mildly prevalent mainly while acquiring higher education. Upanayana was prevalent for girls too but it gradually became prohibited to girls by 500 BC. Girls generally continued education till the attainment of puberty, but quite a few continued higher education. Recapitulation of terms and phrases used in the lecture. Duvija, which means twice burn. First is natural birth and the second during the purification of Upanayana ceremony or burn again for the cause of education and civilization. Sadhyavadus are women who continued education even after puberty. Brahmavadinis are unmarried women who continued higher education. The term Panani is used twice in the lecture. One, Panani is a boarding house for girls and another, Panani is the name of a woman who continued higher education. With this, we come to the conclusion of first subheading of Unit 4.